Are you looking to get on the road to your dream career? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Mentor Select Podcast with your host, Derek Phillips. Always stay up to date on social media at Mentor Select and online at MentorSelect.com. Here's your host of the Mentor Select Podcast, Derek Phillips. Welcome to episode 46 of the Mentor Select Podcast. Truly excited that you've joined us for another week. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share the Mentor Select podcast on whatever platform that you're listening to us. That just helps our community to continue to grow and reach more people who need this vital virtual mentorship. It's been an exciting week for me. Uh, my wife and I are making the final plans for the arrival of our daughter, Legacy Lee Phillips. She will be coming really soon, any day now. So it's, we're kind of on pins and needles, just anxiously awaiting her arrival. Can't wait to meet her. Outside of prepping, just been doing a lot regarding promoting my book, Poverty Powerball, which is available on Amazon. And also I'm working on an online course to supplement Poverty Powerball. Just trying to provide a, a wealth of resources for people who need to be able to adapt to change, really boost their resilience, and ultimately become the person they were meant to be. Just fulfill their dreams and share their gifts with the world. That's what it's all about, which is why I'm really thrilled for uh, the interview we have today with our guest mentor, Queen Harriet P. Harrison. She is a phenomenal uh motivational speaker, author, mentor. She does a lot. Her words are truly anointed and it's all uh, walking in her path of spreading God's word. And she's very high energy, (laughs) inspirational, motivational, whatever you want to call it. She's going to really lift your spirits this morning. So let's get ready to listen to Queen's message. Okay, so today we have Queen Harriet P. Harrison on the Mentor Select Podcast. Welcome, Queen Harriet. Hey, how you doing today? I'm doing great. We're excited to have you. Thank you so much. I am on fire today, so you caught me at a good time. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) On fire. I like that. Perfect timing. Cool. Well, Queen Harriet, on the Mentor Select Podcast, we'd like to get to know our guest mentors a little better. So could you tell us something that most people don't know about you? Well, okay, here's the thing. Most people don't know that I was a cook for 16 years. Oh, okay. Yes, I was a cook, and I actually cooked and I did catering for big, large uh, events. All right. Like all the way up to 500, 600 people at a time. Wow. And I assist the uh, chef in the kitchen to gotcha. do the events and stuff. And that's something that I did. And that was a passion that I loved. And I still cook for my family. I cook at least five days a week for my family. Wow. Home cooked meals every week. Been doing it for almost 40 years. Wow. So you can throw down in the kitchen, huh? You got skills. Oh, I am massive in the kitchen. And <laughs> another thing that people don't know, uh-huh. When I met my husband, he was riding uh, Yamaha bikes, okay. big, those big bikes. And then he transferred over into those those Honda, those mm-hmm. touring bikes. Okay. And we've been riding those touring bikes for 25 years. Wow. <laughs> All right. So you got your custom leather jacket? <laughs> got, I got chaps. I got the whole nine yards. <laughs> All right. That is awesome. Cool. And that's funny for me. That was one of my first jobs. I was working for a caterer and we used to do big, big dinners where they had events at churches. But that was a lot of work working in that kitchen and catering. It's a lot of work. It really is. And the funny thing, nobody would never think that the queen would be in there doing all of that. And I served them. Nobody never come to the kitchen. After I cook, I actually fix everybody's plate and serve them. Wow. I serve. I serve everybody. That's beautiful. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, Queen Harriet, on the Mentor Select podcast, we encourage our listeners to follow their passion and really fulfill their life's purpose. How are you fulfilling your life's purpose? Well, I would tell you um, many years, as I said, I was a cook for 16 years. Yep. And from there, I kind of 
went through a lot of different things where the jobs was laying me off and a lot of different things, you know, just life, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So went through a lot of life of struggles on this. And so finally, I just kind of stopped for a minute and, and took a, a breather and said, you know what, what is it that I really was supposed to be doing in this life at this time? I mean, how I know I'm making a difference, but how am I really need to be making this difference? And so I took some time out to journey and identify and discover who I was. And once I found that out through, through the word of God, I seek the man upstairs who created me. And I found out, okay, what am I supposed to be doing? And all the serving and all the things that I had did prior to that, he said, I want you to go and speak on my behalf. I want you to be a speaker and a coach and a trainer for the kingdom of God. Okay. Wow. So I am a inspirational speaker, coach and trainer for God's kingdom, which means what that all says is that I come to your facility or wherever you are. And my passion and my love is to come and train and coach women and help them identify and discover their own personal greatness within themselves. Oh, that's great. So that's what I do. That's my love. That's my passion. I've been doing that for 16 years now. And I, I can do it whether they pay me or I can do it if they don't, you know, whether they pay me or they don't pay me. I just love doing what I do because I know when I leave there, every person in there, some kind of way I have impact their life with my life purpose. I love it. And that's the truly the... The definition of as far as your well, not definition, but when you know you you're walking in your purpose is when you'll do it for free, <laughs> but you do it so well, yeah. people pay you for it. They pay well for it. <laughs> yeah, they'll pay you so, for it, but if they don't pay you, I still yeah. enjoy it. You know, <laughs> you're delivering great value, but certainly it's something that you just love doing. It's what you were meant to do, what you were put on this earth to do. So, it's yeah, fantastic. yeah. I had, I had the opportunity to listen to you several times where you you spoke, and you're a very powerful, inspirational speaker. You have an inspiring message. So, yeah, certainly uh, can say that that's what you're meant to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, your trials and errors of life and adversities and things like that uh, coming from your brokenness in, in my brokenness in my past of going through so many different uh, things that could have taken me out things that I could have lost my mind. You know, yes. I, I I speak a lot about the rape, you know, being raped and a lot of things of uh, being a single parent and going through a lot of things with the government system and, you know, being caught up and trapped in that government system where they having to take care of me and the welfare and the food stamps and all these different things and not finishing school and not knowing how to provide for my family. You know, so many different things you know, being adopted kid and just so many different things uh, in life, trying to find my way through this place we call uh, our home and, you know, finding what is my purpose? Why am I here? You know, being challenged in so many different areas and trying to say, you know, am I valuable? Am I, you know, a lot of women don't know, you know, we're valuable and we're, we're we're worth something, but we don't think sometimes that we are. So being so broken in my own spirit and in my own life has really given me more passion inside of myself. That's why I say I'm on fire. I'm burning <laughs> like Jeremiah inside because I got so much to give and in such a short time to give it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. Life is short. That's, Life yeah. is so short. Can't take it for granted. Tomorrow's not no, promised. You anyway. not. No, no, no. So that's what I meant by being on fire. I'm on fire for the kingdom of God. I'm on fire for the mission that I've been called to do. I'm on fire for the purpose and the love that I have inside myself to go and change the world. How I know how to change it through the word of God's truth and his spirit. Ooh, wow. And we, we certainly can feel that enthusiasm and passion. <laughs> your voice. I hope I ain't taking over because I Oh, no, Lord, I've been on no, fire all no, the morning, so help calm me no, down, okay? No, don't need to calm. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't want to dampen that fire. Let it spread. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, we all about, throughout the uh, land, as he said, throughout the exactly. land. Let the fire spread throughout the land. <laughs> exactly, because there, there's so many people who are in careers where they, they're miserable. They're not, they're not on fire. They're not impacting people's lives. They're not doing what they were meant to do. 
So just hearing right. hearing someone talk about something that they're so passionate about, something that they love, that they know is their calling, yeah, that's that's contagious, certainly. Um, yeah, well, that's great. Now you mentioned a lot about the adversity you had to overcome throughout your life, but it sounds like you went through that for a reason. It sounds like that's what's really equipped you to empower women now because you, you're speaking from firsthand experience and you can understand what they're going through and you really help yeah. empower them to get over it. Can you talk to us more about that? Yes. Um, let me just say, first of all, every person on the earth has been given greatness inside. Yeah, definitely. Every person that lives and breathes on this earth is a leader. They've been given a, a vision. Right. They've been given dreams. But a lot of times the adversities of life and a lot of times the trials and tribulations of life and the darkness that's in the world, a lot of times it, it dampens, like you say, put that dampness right. on that fire that's inside of you. A lot of times the, the very people that you hang around will stop you from moving into that greatness. And so when you get so low in your life, as I was so low, I, I always tell people, I say, I was so low that I could see the L-O-W. <laughs> I said, the only thing they needed to do was throw dirt on me. Wow. That's how low I had gotten. So I wow. understand why sometimes people, you know, want to check out of here because that's how low you can get to you can't see anything but darkness. Right. But with the darkness that was so dark, so heavy in my life, somewhere there was a little light, just enough, just a little bitty twinkle of a light, say you can keep going. Mm. You don't have to give up. Right. If you can look up, you can stand up. If you can stand up, you can reach up. Right. And that's what I did. I reached up to the heavens and I said, I know I have a greater purpose to do something that would make a difference in this life for not just myself, not just for my family, but for other families around right. in the world. And so sometimes you have to go to the darkest places of your life. You have to be trapped inside to know that you have a call to victory that's inside of you. Love it. So when you mention that, that twinkle of light, you hit basically a rock bottom, like I said, couldn't get any lower than that. What was that twinkle of light for you? The twinkle of light was the light of Jesus. Okay. Because one thing, even though I didn't have a relationship with him, I knew of him. Okay. I had been told over the years about him. So I knew he exists. Okay. And so the twinkle of light was the little light that was inside of me that needed to uh, go through a process so it could be a burning, shining light like it is today. Wow. So a lot of times, you you know, you, you it's buried with all the trash that's been piled up on top of you. And when I mean trash, I mean all the, the, the things of the world that come and stack itself up on top of you. Right. As a human, just life. People, yeah. even today, we just, we just got stacks and stacks of things that's on top of them but they still got a twinkle of light. If they just reach down within themselves, they can see the twinkle. Even if they can't see anything but the twinkle, just follow the twinkle. Because if you follow the twinkle of light that's in you, it's gonna get brighter and brighter and brighter. Yeah. And as I begin to follow that twinkle, the twinkle was that little twinkling light of Jesus that was in me. And I began to ask, Lord, how do I pursue that twinkle of light? How do I go about going after that twinkle of light? Just enough where I can see to get me out of this situation. But I was only trying to get out of one situation, but in the end, I got out of all situations. Because the more I studied about the little bitty light that was in me, and the more I was passionate about trying to find the way out of that dark place, I began to search and search more and more and more and more and more. So it got to a point where I, I was I was crawling at first. And then after a while, I, I, I got up off my knees and then I was able to stand up and I started just walking a little bit like a baby. Right. 
falling down and getting back up. But then after a while, I started walking and I wasn't falling no more. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, now I'm running. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you definitely running full speed. So now you're helping other people and that, and that helping them to crawl, then to get up and then to walk. So it's, you're, you're paying I'm, it What I'm trying to do now is show people about the twinkle of light inside of them now. Yeah. That's the so they have point. to discover, they have to know, even though all the trash and the garbage and all the darkness and all the things that empower their self, self up on top of these people over the years, and they think there's no hope that, you know, it's over, the dreams are not there no more, the vision, I can't see it anymore, you know, I just got to live through this darkness. I'm letting them know, no, you do not, because that little twinkle of light you see, that's what you need to focus on. Okay. Yeah. That's what you need to focus on. And that's what's going to get you out. That's the key. That's the key. I guess you can tell us more about your organization. I know that you're saying you focus on empowering women. What you can tell us the name of your organization and what type of services you offer? Well, I have two different things. I have a nonprofit organization, Today's Sisters Ministry, which was given to me in 2000. It was established in the heavens and also in the earth in 2006, November the 18th of 2006. So that's a nonprofit organization in Texas that I have okay. for women. And then we have the HPH Global Enterprise. Now that's where we implement in there the Call to Victory book. We have the Call to Victory living in their Norton book, which is a spiritual enrichment book for everybody, not just women. And that book is where we talk about how coming out of being trapped inside your own prison walls to releasing you to a call to victory. We are trying to get you from being trapped inside where you're in prison in whatever situation you're in prison yourself or maybe the world has imprisoned you. So now we're helping you to release yourself, come to a call to victory through these two programs with the Today's Sisters Ministry, helping women to identify and discover their own personal greatness. Then we have the HPH Global Enterprise, which is the for-profit organization. And that's where I come out and I do speaking and coaching on that. And we, and at that point, I'm talking to leaders. I'm teaching them about leadership. I'm teaching them about queenship. And I'm helping them come into their own call, their own call to victory. So they can find their own call to victory within themselves now. Love it. And it sounds like your organization takes a, a holistic approach where you're covering the leadership, but also you're providing that the support to help these help individuals to find that that light. To, so you yeah. yes. from start to finish, yeah. you're there to support them along the whole <laughs> their whole journey. That's beautiful. Love it. Uh, so and too. also, too, if they want, if anybody wants to find out more information about who I am and what I do, you know, in in tales of maybe having me to come out and, and be a part of their upcoming events, I do uh, seminars, uh, conferences, you know, I can come out, women's retreats, you know, book sign, and I do have a book, The Call of Victory, Living in an Anointing Book, where they can get that on Amazon, but they can go to my website at Coach Harriet P. Harrison dot com. Okay. That's Coach Harriet P. Harrison dot com. They can go there and they can see more information. And I love to come out and do small groups and medium groups where I come in and do lunch and learns and things like that, you know. And I live I live pretty much do it all, you know, training breakouts and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. And I'll be sure to include all your contact information in the show notes. That's awesome. Now Tell us more about your book, writing your book. What was that like, the process, and how did that come about? What was the inspiration behind it? Well, I have to say, I I really didn't know I had a book inside of me, but this was part of the journey. And this book was given to me 12 years ago. Okay. And the Spirit of God told me I had a book inside of me. And I fought, and I fought for about four months on this thing about, you know, having to deal with this book thing because since I didn't finish school and I had this hang up and this thing about myself that I can't write, you know, I can't do this and I can't do that. A lot of times people, we, we, we inferior on things, you know, because we feel like we're not 
incapable of doing certain that things. Self doubt. So that was the yes, the self doubt, the low self esteem. I can't do this. As I'm impo- it's impossible. You're asking me to do so. Why don't you find someone else? I went through all of this. And that went on for about four or five months. Finally, I just couldn't take it no more. I said, okay, what do you want me to do? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. (laughs) I can't do it no more. I can't sleep. I can't function. I can't eat. You know, when when he pressed on you to do something, there's a vision, there's a call in your life, and you're not going to rest. So finally, I accepted it. And uh, my first thing was I went and got my first Bible. And with my last $40, got my Bible got me a notepad and my husband put together a little computer for me at that time. And I didn't know how to type that well, but he, you know, there we were. And so every morning the Lord told me to get up and get to the typewriter and just listen for me. And I'm going to tell you what to say. And I didn't even know how to go through the Bible, but as I began to just sit and listen, and I didn't know how to listen, but every day I would get up faithfully. You know, that's the thing. You have to be consistent and faithful to whatever it is you're going to do. And you right. know that because you just finished this race. So you understand yeah. that. got to be okay? consistent. <laughs> you got to be consistent. You got to make a commitment. This is what you're going to do no matter what. And so that's what I did. And I sit there every morning at that little computer my husband, you know, put together for me and with my pen and paper. And finally, I would just pray every morning and ask him to speak to me. And whatever he wanted to say, I would just try to write it down. And then he began to finally, I could hear him. I was writing it down, but I wasn't writing fast enough. He said, well, try to type it. So I was picking away. And uh, I just started where I was. I want people to understand, you start where you are. That's what I did. I just started with what I had, okay? Things not always going to look like you want it to look when you start. So I just pick it on the computer and just write in whatever it is he's telling me to write. And before I knew it, nine months later, I had a book. Wow. And my book is for the end time. I wrote the book 12 years ago, but the book is for now. Yeah. So when you go through the book, you're going to find out that what you're reading is a book that was for right now in the end times of the, the things that we're facing and how to get through these times in from the spirit realm of God to the natural realm of where we are today, because you got to have answers and people are asking now, how do I survive these trying times? Mm-hmm. How do I make it? How do I survive? Mm-hmm. How do I live through this? Yeah, so you're sharing those timeless principles and lessons. It's timeless. In that book. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was written 12 years ago. But what happened was after I written the book, and got the book written and published and everything. Then I had to go and live through the book to become the call to victory. The, I'm, I'm sorry, the call to victory of who I am today. So I had to come from a defeated place of trapped inside my own life, writing through this book while I was trapped inside my own prison walls. Once the book got published, then I had to go back and live the book. Okay. Page by page by page until I came all the way out. In 12 years, it took me 12 years to live this book. Mm. And now the book is on the market now. Love it. To be sold to the people. Wow. And that's an incredible process, incredible journey. (laughs) (laughs) A 12 year journey. Mm -hmm. Wow. 12 year journey. Love it. It But how would they know? The book works if no one could come back and say, I was trapped inside when I started this journey. And now I'm walking in a call to victory, living in the anointed. Now I'm living in the presence and the power and authority and the dominion of God now. But I was once trapped inside where there was only a twinkle of light, where now I'm a shining light bulb now. I had to go through the process. Got to. And that's the thing about with the profession of being a, a motivational speaker, like anyone can call yourself a motivational speaker, but the t- people that truly motivate me and, and impact my life is people who, who are, have lived with their, what they're telling me to do as far as the lessons and principles they're sharing. They're actually, they exactly. lived it. <laughs> so that's exactly. something that, yeah, you, you're someone who certainly inspires me because I know any principles that you share, any lessons that you give me, the things that you 
you've lived it. You've, you've, sh- you've proven by example that it works. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, how can you be effective in the times that we live in now? We're in such critical times. We're in so much darkness. We got so much going on from the White House to the corporate America and also to your house and everybody else's house. So how can we be effective as leaders in this time and season where we are right now in this generation if we have not lived something and came through something and have some scars? Right. To be not, able to show the people that exactly. look, I may have some scars. I'm not still bleeding, but I got scars to let you know I've been through. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're not you're not talking in theory. What you think or heard? Or... No, 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 no. I didn't read this out of book. This <laughs> is the book. I am the call to victory, living in the anointing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, so we have the road of books, your author, your speaker, your trainer. Uh, oh, I forgot ministry. this. To tell yeah, you. What, what else also, do you do? I, yeah, I forgot this to tell you this here. I went to John, uh, the John C. Maxwell School okay. uh, right. University, and I actually got certified with John C. Maxwell team. So I'm certified and got my certifications with them. Okay. Wow. Can't forget mm-hmm. about that. That's a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big that's a big deal because when I got interviewed to come in, you know, the people that was coming into John uh, C. Maxwell University, they was well educated people. We talking pastors and bishops and doctors and lawyers and and, and principals of uh, uh, schools and we talking deans and from colleges and stuff. And you're talking about somebody that didn't even finish high school. So that was a big deal for me when they interviewed me and was impressed of all the things I had been through to get here. They right. said, you know what, we gotta, we gotta let you in. We, your experiences of life, life experience. put you here. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah that's nothing that you can't be taught in any college, no degree, any of that can't, can't replace life experience. It's priceless. I wanna encourage everyone that hear the sound of the voice of God through me today. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you was like me, a drop out of high school, just got a GED. You had your kids out of wedlock. Yeah. Or, or you've been homeless. Or you've been laid off like me three times. You know, uh, been just been through, I mean, different things. Family rejected me. I've been through all the rejection that can possibly be rejected. When the family rejects you and don't have anything to do with you. Here wow. I'm just telling people, it doesn't matter what your situation, the race, everything that I have endured have made me who I am today. I don't want nobody to dismiss uh, your amen hardship. Amen. Don't yeah. dismiss your hardship because your hardships is what create is going to create the greatness that's inside of you. Those hardships is what's going to bring that, that ball of fire as I'm talking about right now inside of me, that ball of fire is inside of you too. And when you stop thinking that you don't have anything to give to the world, remember everything you got inside of you, somebody in this world, if somebody, group of people somewhere in this world is waiting on you to shine your light. Yes. Somebody in this world is waiting on you to identify and discover your own personal greatness, to come out of being trapped inside, to walk in your call to victory so you can show them how to come out of there and walk right. in it's, their call to victory. Exactly. And it's our duty to do that. And yeah, the longer we we get trapped, stay trapped in our own heads and our own prisons, that's people that we, we're supposed to be serving who we can't. So, yeah, that is so true. Wow. So I, I wanted everybody to understand that because people are giving up now right. and they're throwing it. They, they waving the white flag and I want to tell them to put it down. Well, don't give up. It's not, not over. <laughs> it's not over. It's not the over. dirt is not on you, honey. You're still yeah. here. Oh uh, yeah. And I think you're a great example of, yeah, it doesn't matter of what your background is, but once you identify your greatness that's inside of you, Hey, you're going to be able to, that's what's unique, what makes you unique. And that's what you're going to do better than anybody else in the world 
anybody that got the Ivy League degree, it don't matter. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That, your greatness. Once you identify that, that's that's what you're hit, meant to do. You have everything that you need inside you to do it to the best of your ability. So that's awesome. And I think a lot of times that we see other people and we say, well, they went to school, uh, like you say, and they, they, they have so many skills and so many talents and they got this and they got that because I know I did that to my own self. Yeah. I put me down and I thought all the greatness in everyone else, but right. myself. Right. But I'm here to tell you, Yes, I can see greatness in you, but I also can see greatness right. in me. Right. And, and great- I don't compare myself to you because yeah. your greatness is not my greatness. Right. But someone needs your greatness. Someone yep. needs my greatness. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, indeed. Because it's people that are resonate to my story and that won't resonate to yours. And it's people that are resonate to your story and won't resonate to mine. Because that's just exactly. that we're, we're called to serve. So, yeah, it's awesome. 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 Now, with this journey, especially being an entrepreneur and just really empowering people, it's a it's a long, hard journey. Can you tell us about just some of the the, 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 the struggles that people who once they start walking in their purpose, some things that they can expect just to well, try to get their, get their mind right, I, to be prepared? <laughs> Well, I don't think you really get prepared for this. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been in this for 16 years. Mm-hmm. And the Lord, uh, about 12 years, 12, 13 years ago now, he told me to come away from the job. Okay. So I had to start depending on him. You know, we all used to get a paycheck. Yeah, you know, that's comfort, just the way the security, it is. Perceived security. That's, come on now. And then all of a sudden you're saying, you know, I don't want you working for man anymore because I want you just work for the kingdom of God. So I need you to help my people. I need you to coach my people. I need you to train my people as I'm going to teach you. I need you to trust me that I will provide for you. But let me tell you something. I had a problem with that. Yeah. And I just, and I know y'all probably saying, you know, well, you're going to talk to a girl like this. Let me tell you, I, I went just like this because I'm very straightforward. You know I'm straightforward. I keep it real. <laughs> I keep it real. I'm authentic people here. Yes, indeed. I say, Lord, I don't know you like that. <laughs> 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 now, I know of you, but right. I'm not, you know, me and you ain't, you know, we ain't there like that. <laughs> right. You telling right. me to trust you to pay all my bills? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. So how you going to do that? <laughs> so I'm questioning him, you know, and I know he's getting a big laugh out of this right. because he's the creator. He's probably thinking, are you kidding me, woman? Go sit down. You yeah. know, really? But I'm trying to get people. And it, your call may not be into the kingdom, but the kingdom of God, I want everybody to understand. The kingdom of God, when we're talking about that, we're talking about you having a, a it could be in the marketplace. It could be a doctor, a lawyer. Yeah. It could be anybody serving the kingdom of God, okay? Right. Anybody, okay? Radio station, anything. Just saying, whatever your skills in your career is. So if he asks you to step away from the world way of doing it and trust him to do it, then that will be a challenge. There would be, you know, uh, all kind of uh, Goliaths in front of you. <laughs> you know, all kind of giants, you know, standing there to tell you that you can't do this. And one thing I learned is a lot of times the closest people to you that you think your friends and your family and th- sometimes they're the ones that really beat you up. Oh, yeah. They really can beat you up and make you feel like something's wrong with you. Right. And a, and a lot of times they won't they won't support you. Okay. So for those people out there that you have heard the voice of God, God has given you a vision, a dream, and you went and shared it with someone, someone close. And they told you you was crazy, <laughs> or you need to go sit down, or you just need to go back to work like everybody else, like the rest of the ninety percent of the people in the world. Right. Go on back to work, pay your bills, and sit down and quit dreaming. And I'm wait here to, to die. tell you, <laughs> and wait to die, yeah. wait to die. Exactly, <laughs> you got it. 
I'm yeah. telling you today, if that is a burning passion inside of you, a dream that you cannot get rid of, a vision that you can't stop seeing, pursue it. Yes. Pursue it. Yeah. Don't wait for somebody to give you the green light. If the God that you serve have given you the green light, then go with that. Yeah. Eventually, as time go on, my family slowly came around. But did I go through hell and high water? You <laughs> best to believe I yes, went through no. hell and high water. And many times, I'm not going to lie, I wanted to raise that white flag and call it quits. Yeah. But the burning passion of that vision and that dream inside of me did not let me stop. Well, I'm glad it didn't. I'm glad it didn't either. <laughs> that is so true. With certainly with, with family, your closest uh, people in your lives, that just because you have a vision and a dream don't mean they're going to be able to see it. So when you share it with them, yeah. yeah, it's your vision. So they they may not be able to see. They likely won't be able to see it until you actually make it into reality. But so, yeah, don't get discouraged because that's going to come. People are going to doubt you and tell you like they call you crazy and tell you just, hey, Stick to the status quo and get a job. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing. And, yeah, so they yeah, can't. Yeah. That's what, that's all that they know. So they certainly can't comprehend you saying that you have a a bigger calling. So yeah, that's great advice. I, I believe you know after having the opportunity to talk to so many people in different, uh, 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 I'm trying to say, different ethnic groups of people. Yeah. I have had the opportunity to find out that it's not that people trying to be mean when they tell you to go back and get a job yeah, and, and just be status quo. It's the fact that they have a dream. Mm -hmm. They have a vision that's right. been given to them. And somewhere in their lifetime, they pushed it under the rug. Yeah. They was afraid. They were afraid to jump out away from the group of people that they was around. Because yeah. they didn't want to go through that scrutiny. So yeah. they pushed it under the rug. And years and years have passed. And it, it died within yeah. them. And so now when you come and say you have a dream, you have a vision, now they want to push yours under the rug and let yours die too. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you can't do that because this is your dream. This is your your vision that God has given you. And you don't allow anybody to push yours under the rug, no matter how many fights you have to fight, no matter how many tears you have to cry, no matter how many sleepless nights that you have to sit up and figure out how you're going to get this done. The bottom line is get it done. Yep. And don't let nobody push your dream and vision under the rug and let it die inside of you. And you have to take your vision and dream dream to the graveyard. Exactly. Yeah. The greatest slogan of all time. Just do it. <laughs> oh, do it. No what, just, just do, do it. it. And I know you may be doing it with shaky legs, Yep. little money in the bank. As I have done many things with little money in the bank. Yes. Didn't know how it was going to happen, but it, 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 got, it happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because as you pursue your dream and that vision that God has given you, the universe will come and step in and help you. Oh, yeah. Laws of attraction. The yeah. laws of attraction will come and step in and help you. Yep. Yeah. If you believe in what you have, and if you believe what you have will make a difference in this world, you best to believe if you keep going, you will see the fruit of your labor. Wow. That's remarkable. You, you certainly are on fire. You wasn't kidding. <laughs> wow, uh, that's awesome, Queen Harriet. As we get ready to wrap up this interview, you certainly given us a lot of great advice, practical advice, and just let people know, yeah, how to follow their dreams and just do it. But for the listeners, yeah, let's just let's just face the fact that. No one is going to be your biggest cheerleader but yep. you. Yep. Indeed. Put your pom-poms in your hand <laughs> and run your race and shake those pom-poms as you turn that corner. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Just keep shaking them 
and it turn changes. the corner and keep running even then when your legs are wobbling because the universe will straighten those legs. I'm telling right. you, keep it will straighten on. those legs. It will. Awesome. And you'll get your second win and you'll be coming around that thing, honey, and they think you dead. A lot of times people thought I was dead and gone because they didn't hear from <laughs> me for a while. But baby, let me tell you, I was back here getting these legs back back right. up and straightening them again because they was yeah. wobbling, you know? Yeah. So I had yeah. to I had to pull out and get them back, you know, strong again. Right. Put them pom-poms back in my hand again. And now I'm back on the race again. I'm shaking my pom-pom. Mm -hmm. I'm running. But here it is. I ain't running on your pace. I'm running on mine now. Exactly. exactly. I'm running my race. Running and race. I'm in my lane. You okay? Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's I ain't running at your pace no more. <laughs> See, at first I was running at your pace because yeah. you was telling me I need to run a little faster. But I understand as I learn about greatness. See, it ain't about running somebody else's race. It's about running your race on your pace, how yep. you can run yours. Yep, that is so true. You know that because you just got through running the race. Exactly, exactly. Of, of those thousands of runners, I was only worried about one, me. <laughs> I was running my Thank race. You. I let them worry Thank about running their race. <laughs> Thank you. And when you got through, you got your medal around yep. your neck. Yep, exactly. Because you came across the finish line. Yep, exactly. That's and I want to leave this and we can wrap it up. I want to uh -huh. leave this here to let everybody know. If you don't learn how to run your race, then don't try to stop somebody else from running theirs. Ooh, amen. Yep. If you, don't, if you have decided that you want to push your vision, and your dream that God has given you under the under the rug and let it die. Don't try to put somebody else's lights out. Yes. yes. Because everybody don't want to die with their vision and their dreams inside of them. See, some food. of us want to <laughs> die with a legacy, and some of us want to die empty. Exactly. And I'm one of those people. Yeah, I want to die empty. Yeah, take it all. <laughs> no. Take it all. Because when I leave all. here, I'm going to be glad to leave because I ain't got nothing else to give you. Exactly. Whew. That is some deep. That's a deep message there. <laughs> Love it. So that's, that's how I want to end that thing. I Woo. will be walking in my call to victory until I take my last breath. And then I'll just go on to the other side and finish it up. There you go. There you go. Love it. So, Queen Harriet, how can uh, listeners get in contact with you? What's the best way? They can reach me. As I said earlier, I want everybody to check out that Call to Victory book, Living in the Anointing. You can go on Amazon.com. You can get the book there. Also, you can reach me on my website. More information about the leadership, empowerment classes, upcoming events queenship classes all those different things that's going to be taking place we're going to be doing a podcast real soon we haven't launched that yet but that will be coming out sometime between uh the springtime and the early uh of uh summertime we'll okay. be doing that so we'll be putting that out on on the website the website is www.coach the word coach harriet h-a-r-r-i-e-t P as in Paul Harrison dot com. Okay. Coach Harriet P. Harrison dot com. Also, you can call me directly. 972-330-7775. That's 972-330-7775. And I would love to talk to you. And I would love to be your speaker, trainer, and coach at your next event. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Queen. It's been an awesome interview. And I certainly want you to continue spreading your fire. Certainly. That's oh yeah. I'm, I'm gonna spread this fire, but I'm not gonna burn down stuff. Wow, that was a remarkable interview with Queen P. Harriet. She certainly was on fire. <laughs> she was not kidding. I hope you all got some motivation, inspiration from her anointed words i uh, really you can feel just her passion and enthusiasm through the the microphone <laughs> be sure to check out her website books and just products and services that she offers queen she has a lot of wisdom to share and as you can tell she's really passionate about what she does she really wants to help everyone discover their greatness that they possess inside. So we really appreciate Queen for stopping by and 
sharing the good word with us and inspiring us on this Wednesday morning. All right. You all definitely check back in next week. I have an interview with another guest mentor. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Mentor Select Podcast, helping you identify and follow your passions. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit MentorSelect.com and MentorSelect on social media. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review. We'll catch you next time.